Living in an off-the-grid cabin on a hill in western Maine, author and biologist Bern Heinrich is surrounded by the things he loves. And then I'll come out and go to the Birds and bees, wildflowers, and wood frogs. Now in his 80s, he's just as curious about the natural world as he was when he was a child. I've never seen them out of this web. See, they've eaten all this. I think they feed at night. Heinrich is the author of more than 20 books about nature, with topics ranging from the intelligence of ravens to the lives of trees. Many of the observations and studies that fill their pages occur right at his home, in his own backyard in the surrounding forest. Instances when I was really young, when I was totally enamored by something, and it was always the things that I couldn't understand. And there's always something that we don't understand and they keep showing up all the time. I, I get excited. I get excited when I see something new. I want to know more about it because I, I kind of think I know a lot, but what, what is really exciting is what I don't know. I mean, if I really look close a lot of times, I look at the tiny little flowers and I see tiny little insects there that I never even thought about. So I have to have the affinity for it before I look really, really close. You know, I've, I've seen some insects this year, you know, on, on the flowers that I hadn't seen before, just because I like them. Well, let's walk around then and, uh, and see this property that I've heard so much about in the books. Okay. Visiting his home is like stepping into one of his books. Pieces of the natural world are sprinkled on windowsills and bookshelves. Tell me a little bit about this table here with all these names. Yeah, well, see the benches here. Uh, this is the study table, meal table. And uh, I told them to go ahead and leave their mark. So they carve in their initials. You've had a lot of but, students here. Yeah, but if you want to go ahead, you can put yours in. <laughs> uh, he built the first log cabin on the property in 1980, hauling in materials with a team of oxen. He says it was a natural progression of things he used to do as a child, building tree houses and other types of primitive shelters in the woods. Years later, he had a second cabin built on the foundations of a farmhouse that used to stand there. Now, the first cabin is for students and guests, so, while he lives and works in the second. Heinrich has been interested in nature since he was a little boy growing up in northern Germany, helping his father capture mice and birds to sell as museum specimens. He remembers walking to school one day and becoming enchanted by a willow tree that was covered in bumblebees. His first book, Bumblebee Economics, remains one of his favorites. He's always working on several writing pieces at once. One of his next books will be a collection of his watercolor paintings and illustrations, with a concentration on the beauty of the natural world. While Heinrich is well known for his nature writing, that's not the only thing he's famous for. In the running world, He's known for breaking several long distance records while in his 40s. He set an American record for 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, and 100 miles. He also set the American record for 24 hours on a track, running over 156 miles in the course of a day. Okay, these are my running shoes. All my distance races, I used them after the first one. I knew it, these were the lucky shoes, so I, I wore every one of them. And, and I, you can see how they're worn out. Just a little bit. A, a little <laughs> bit, yeah. I mean, there's nothing left. Your feet didn't ever hurt in them? No. <laughs> no. Not that I remember. I mean, everything else hurt, but not, <laughs> not, I bet. not my feet. Heinrich wrote two books about running in which he explores how different animals run and why. These days, he continues to run for exercise, plus stays active chopping firewood for the wood stove, gardening, observing nature, and conducting experiments around his property. I start the day, I have usually not the slightest idea what I'm gonna do. And I go out and, and pretty soon I see something. He's currently studying wood frogs that are living in a pond by his house, as well as a beetle that buries carcasses of small animals, such as mice. It should be down here. So the beetle buried it? Yes, the beetle buried it. If it's still here, we'll see. Ah, there it is. There it is. There's a tail. See it? Can you believe a, be a beetle? This is hard stuff. Can you believe it burying it? 
and so it should be there unless it just laid eggs and then left. So I, that's something actually I, I like to know. There's a beetle. Look at the beetle. See, there's two of them. A pair. A pair. So that's a mated pair. Uh, and they're going to lay eggs in there. Okay. And I'm going to put this over there uh, so something else won't get up. For people looking to learn more about the natural world, Heinrich said to start with whatever sparks your interest, then look closer, admire it in detail, ask questions. In his book, One Man's Owl, he wrote, I feel a strong identity with the world of living things. I was born into it, we all are. But we may not feel the ties unless we gain intimacy by seeing, feeling, smelling, touching, and studying the natural world. Trying to live in harmony with the dictates of nature is probably as inspirational as living in harmony with the Quran or the Bible. Perhaps it is also a timely undertaking. <laughs>